Oscar Mike Radio is proud to be sponsored by Joyce Asak of Remax Synergy. Hi, this is Joyce Asak with Remax Synergy. I am a real estate agent that services the South Shore. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram by following Joyce Asak at Asak Real Estate or my website, asakrealestate.com. You can also reach me directly at 508-942-7146. For any buyers or sellers that I'll be working with in 2019, a donation will be made in their name to 22 Kill. Hello. My name is Travis. This is Oscar Mike Radio. Oscar Mike Radio is part of the Hoobazoo Network. You can find out more on Hoobazoo.com. And this is number 148. Today is May 16th, I believe. And I'm remote in a place I've, I've been before with you all. I am in southern Massachusetts at Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes, talking to the, the owner, president, CEO, Woman extraordinaire, super mom, Julie Lovely on Oscar Mike Radio. Julie, welcome back. Thanks so much. It's so nice to talk to you. It is nice. We have a nice, beautiful day. There's no rain. I absolutely love doing this podcast in your barn. Oh, thanks so much. It just feels like I'm surrounded by the story and, and what Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes is about. For those people who don't know about your organization, can you kind of tell us what you're all about? Sure. So we run two programs. One is specifically for veterans that have PTSD, um, and that's called Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes. And then we have a second program that we run called um, Equine Facilitated Psychotherapy. And those are private sessions with our therapist, Uh, myself and a horse. And those aren't necessarily for veterans, but they can be. Um, We work with people that might go to a therapist for all different reasons, but instead of going to um, an office, they come here and work with our horses. No kidding. So how long have you been doing this? So Wild Hearts was started in 2009. So we're starting, we're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year. And then in 2013, we started the Equine Facilitated Psychotherapy Program. And then in 2014, we ran our first program specifically for veterans. So you have been doing this really for 10 plus years. Yeah. Because there's the time to actually think of your concept, plan it out, prepare and execute it. But you've been providing services for 10 years. That's right. amazing. Right, right. How's it feel to hit that 10 year mark? It's an amazing feeling. And we've gone through a lot of transitions. And I think we've really paid attention to what our clients and the people in the community have needed, which is why we did go through a transition back in 2013. And, um, and I think we've found our niche and we're really, we're, we're very happy with what we're doing now. So 10 years, the, the philanthropic landscape has changed so much, especially in this state. There are, there are now thousands of organizations for any number of causes, especially in the veteran space. Tell us first, what are the challenges of, of being in this space and providing these services? And then I really want to hear some of the victories, some of the things that you've really seen in over the course of time that make this all worthwhile. Yeah. So the tough thing about running a nonprofit is you're not just competing against organizations that operate in your own space, but you're competing against every single other organization out there for dollars. Um, so it's a challenge because you know, your, your cause is worthy and you know, the work that you're doing is great. And the, the, um, you're seeing such amazing things happen, but at the same time, there's some other really worthy causes out there. And so you're competing against all of those for dollars. Um, so what we try to focus on is really building relationships within our community, because we feel like the people within our community can get to know us and really understand what we're doing and see the influence that we have um, over the the people that come to the program and everybody that is in their lives. So their their friends, their family, their coworkers, and they can really see the reach that we're having by running our program. So you're in the community, you're local. What does the community think? Because you're, you're driving along and you, you could drive right past your, your <laughs> place here, not even know there's a farm here, but 
you're, you're definitely in the community. What's that like when you talk to community leaders and, and, and neighbors and friends about what you do? Yeah, so we're, we're sort of tucked back. We're, we're a private little farm. We don't have a sign. And we did that on purpose because we want our services to be private. We don't want people stopping by when we have groups here or we're running private therapy sessions. And um, we want it to feel very safe here. So we purposely don't invite people to the farm unless it's by an appointment. So we have to get out there in the community to let people know what we're doing. Cause like you said, you could drive by this farm and have no idea that it's even here. So we work a lot with um, community organizations. So the um, lions clubs, the rotaries, local banks, local businesses, um, business organizations like the Bridgewater Business Association um, or the Metro South Chamber. Um, and we really just try to let people know the type of work that we're doing since you can't always come here and just drop by and see what we're, you know, see the actual work that we're doing. One of the things that really stands out to me about this place, every time I've come here, whether it's been to observe or talk to you, I get this sense of calm. I get this sense of peace and I I can't understand sometimes why that is and I don't know if it's just the fact that I'm on a farm and I grew up on a farm and I'm back to my roots or the fact that I'm away from all the external things in life and can just you know let this experience surround me how do other veterans and people feel when they come here they get that same feeling and that is something that we hear over and over again is that when they come here it's so peaceful and they're able to just absorb everything in the moment and shut out all of the thoughts that they have going around in their head or, you know, things that they need to do or things that happened yesterday or even, you know, 40 years ago. They can just shut out all those thoughts and just completely be in the moment. Well, speaking of the farm, now I've noticed a couple of additions, small additions. You yeah. have like these these miniature horses. <laughs> Walking around before we started talking, I'm like, I didn't see that last time. How, how do they figure into what you're doing? Yeah, so our miniature horses have been here. But, oh, really? um, yes, yeah, so that I, they've been here since I moved into the farm oh. about 10 years ago. <laughs> but they've taken a really um, integral role in the, the program. And we didn't work with them previously. We tended to work with the bigger horses. And, um, and I don't really have a good reason why that was. Um, They were sort of, they came in as companions for one of my big horses before I had any other big horses here. And um, they were just kind of hung out with the other horses and we didn't really do too much with them as far as the program was concerned. And we had one participant who came to us a few years ago and the first session she worked with our big horses and, and she really just was intrigued by our miniature horses. And she said, you know, do we have an opportunity to work with the minis? And I said, sure. Yeah, let that would be great. I would love to include them in this. So she really started, she was the first one to really start working with these miniature horses. And the results have just been phenomenal. They, they were, they came from a rescue. Okay. So they, um, they didn't have a lot of training and... Um, they didn't have a lot of trust and they mostly just sort of trusted me, you know, to feed them and groom them and, and, you know, take care of them, but they really didn't trust anybody else. And over the past few years, she's worked with them and she's got them loading on the trailer. She is doing a demonstration at our benefit dinner in June, um, with one of the minis where she does a, a versatility obstacle course. Oh, wow. Um, And they've become a really integral part of the program where all of our other veterans work with them, too. Nice. Yeah. So you mentioned your 10th dinner. Tell me about that, because it looks like it's it's very interesting, like not a normal kind of event. (laughs) And it's very, very cool. I want to hear more about it. Yeah. So that we wanted to have a really fun celebration that we've been here for 10 years. And so we decided to have it later in the year. We usually have it in April, but we're having it in June this year. So we're really hoping for good weather. It's at the East Bridgewater uh, East Bridgewater Commercial 
commercial club. <laughs> and um, it's going to be outside under a tent. We'll really? be using their pavilion. Our miniature horses will be there. Um, Mary Ellen, who's the, the veteran that I mentioned, has been working with our minis, is going to do a demonstration with them. We'll have a big barbecue. Two Jerks Barbecue is going to do all the food. So it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so speaking of Mary Ellen, what's it been like when you first met her to now she's working with the miniature horses and now presenting them at your event? What's that, what's that like? Because you had to start with her, work with her. And I've watched you work with the veterans. And, and once the veteran kind of lets down their guard and, and understands what you're saying to them, all kinds of good things happen. What's that been like for you to watch her do that? It has been so amazing to watch her transformation with these horses. Um, When she first came to us, she had no horse experience. And when people come to us, we don't ask them about their history. We don't ask them about their past traumas. We're just focused on the moment. We're working with these horses right now. And, um, and that's what we, we focus on. And she, um, worked with some of our big horses and then she took a interest in the, the miniatures. And over the past few years, she has gone from a participant to, um, being a volunteer and helping other veterans who come and, and work with the horses. And she's also a certified peer specialist. So she's taken a role in our program where, um, if other veterans need to talk, um, they have her to be able to talk to. So she has much more of a leadership role in the program than when she first started. And it's just been absolutely amazing to see. So someone came here for some, some healing, some, some rebuilding. They started working through your program and then were able to take what they learn and help others. That's really what you want to see yeah. for anybody. That must be, it has to be amazing. And, and speaking of that, folks, when, when I came here the first time and watched the horses and the veterans working together, it's a real different thing because you're telling the veteran what to do. And the veteran's trying to tell the horse what to do. And it's kind of like you all three have to be together to, to make this work. How's the, how, how prominent does a horse figure into this? Because it seemed like the horse knew what to do. Yeah, so how's that work? The what we hope happens through the time that our veterans come to the program the very first day until the very end of the 10 weeks is they build a partnership with our horses and they really learn how to work with them and how to ask them for certain things and have the horse respond the way they want them to because they trust them. So a horse doesn't necessarily have to do these things. Horses in the wild, their main goal is just survival. So it's pretty amazing when a horse chooses to work with a human being because they don't have to do that. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. Now explain that to me. I, I, didn't really, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so this is one of the things people will often ask the difference between dogs and horses. And horses are prey animals. So... Um, their survival in the wild is dependent on their abilities to read other animals' intentions. So our trainer, Jen Goddard, she was actually just telling me a story about how um, horses in the wild, they'll go down to, say, a little watering hole, and there'll be lions drinking out of the watering hole. Now, lions are predators of horses. And because horses have these finely tuned instincts, they can tell if the lions are in hunt mode or if they're just, you know, getting a drink and they have no interest in hunting right at that moment. And so you'll see a lion and a horse drinking out of the same watering hole because the horse can read the lion's intentions and know that he's not going to hurt him at that moment. Yes, that's one thing that, that maybe you can explain better than I can when I talk to people about what you do is I try to tell them, look, I'm watching the veteran work with the horse. I'm wa- and, and you're like 20 yards away from the veteran. Uh, they're in the middle of the paddock. But that horse seemed to understand that the veteran was having some challenges getting mm-hmm. used to, to walking them around in a circle. Mm-hmm. And, and 
I couldn't understand how the horse picked up on that. Maybe you just explain that to me, but it's really different to see because, yeah. uh, you know, dogs and cats, like uh, people, there's this cat walking around uh, while we're, <laughs> we're talking right now, and the cat definitely runs the show here. Oh, he does. <laughs> um, but it's it's different. It was it was very, very different. So yeah. you're telling me the horse is kind of like empathetic? Yes, yeah. Okay. The horses are very empathetic, and like I said, they can read our intentions, um, so when you're working with a horse, you have to have a lot of self-confidence. You have to be thinking about what you are expecting the horse to do. Um, you have to have leadership skills because the horse is looking to you to for guidance because we're the leader when we work with a horse. So, um, and that's what we work on here is developing those skills to be able to communicate with a horse. And so when I show someone how to do a certain activity with a horse, so for example, they were lunging the, the activity that you saw, they were, um, had the horse connected by a long line and were asking him to move in circles around walk, trot, canter, change direction, stop, um, face you. And, we teach the cues that you need to use to ask the horses to do that, but you have to have the connection with the horse so that the horse feels confident that, yes, okay, he's asking me to do these things and I'm safe and I'm going to do them for him. Well, one of the things that that really stood out to me is once the veteran, you know, brought up that self-confidence and they calmed down Mm -hmm. and they really listen to what you were saying they were able to communicate to the horse what they wanted the horse to do the the, the look on their faces the, sh- the the transformation i mean i'm not trying to be over dramatic here but it was a very marked change from and, and i get it i mean i wouldn't know what to do if you put me out in the paddock right now <laughs> I, I wouldn't but I, I have to feel that you know watching them once they got it and, and the horse was doing it they really embraced it yeah and yeah. if it's good for me to see, what's it been like for you watching this with many veterans over the years? Oh, it's 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 such an. I just love seeing each veteran have such a sense of accomplishment, and you know, learning how to communicate with these horses and see that this horse trusts you. They're doing these things because you've built a partnership, and they trust you. It's just, it's what keeps me going with this program. And, and, and we had talked about before we started our broadcast about how exhausting it is to run a nonprofit. But coming out here with the veterans and seeing what happens with these horses, and it's, it's beneficial both ways. It's so therapeutic for the horses, and it's therapeutic for the veterans. And it's just such an incredible thing to watch. Yeah, because... Last time, and I'll have those podcasts in, in the blog post for this podcast, they're telling me how it's, you know, I'm angry or I'm upset yeah. or I'm just afraid. And I come here and I'm happy and, and I feel so much better. It, it, it's it's just amazing to sit there and hear that and then to see it also at the same time. I, I was sold. I, I, I couldn't believe the change in their lives. So... For this year, it's been 10 years. What do you have going on this year for uh, Wild Hearts? So this year, we um, we have our two sessions that we run from uh, for 10 weeks each, Friday mornings from 9 to 11 a.m. We're actually about two weeks into our current session. So we run one from May to July, and then we run a second one from September to November. And then we also have the opportunity for our veterans to participate in a Tim Hayes clinic in October. Um, Tim Hayes is a natural horsemanship trainer, and he runs a one-day equine therapy clinic. And it's just a great opportunity for them to further what they're doing here um, in a different setting at... um, we're, we're running it at a beautiful farm in Carver. Um, the, the owner, Beth Arnold, has donated her space to us so that we could run this clinic. And it's, it's an opportunity, too, for the staff to learn, for, for myself to learn, and because we're, we're always learning. And to be able to learn new techniques and incorporate them into what we're doing with horses, it's just a great opportunity. So it's, it's open to the public. Anyone can come to the clinic. Um, the veterans who participate in our program can work with a horse in the clinic for free. We'll cover the cost for them. 
um, but anyone can come and watch. You know, one thing as we're sitting here talking that came to mind is every person, every veteran is different, right? Right. So there's, there's different paths they use in this program, but I have to think that every horse is different as well. Absolutely. So is, is there a, a means to, is one horse going to be, I don't know if I like a better term, better at this than another horse? That is the great thing about this type of work is that because every horse is different, every horse is qualified to work in this kind of program. Really? Um, I had mentioned we had been through a transition back in 2013. And when we first started in 2009, um, we primarily offered therapeutic riding for children. And um, it became difficult to offer because our herd was starting to age. And they did have different types of personalities. And it is very hard to find a great therapeutic riding horse um, because they do need to be very calm they need to not be reactive. Um, you have to make sure that the person up on top of the horse is safe. So they have to have a certain kind of personality. Um, and being a smaller farm with a small herd, our horses didn't necessarily fit that mold. So given the fact that there wasn't a lot of opportunities for people to seek um, equine facilitated therapy in this area, we decided that we needed to focus on that. We were getting a lot of people coming to us that wanted to volunteer because they were really looking for therapy for themselves. So we decided because this was happening so much and there are other therapeutic riding programs in close proximity to us, we would stop that program and just focus on the mental health aspect. So it was a really great opportunity for our herd as well because they were such different personalities. And if one horse tends to be a little bit more reactive, a little more spooky, that was okay because learning how to build a trust with that horse and help that horse to relax is all part of this program. So that is one of the reasons why I love focusing on mental health is because any horse really works for this type of program because it's all unmounted. We're not actually riding the horses. Well, that's the amazing thing. Um, Just leading a horse out into the paddock, having the horse do different things. You know, it seems like every horse could do it. Didn't know how much personality is figured into it, but everybody's different and the horse didn't seem to care, but the horse definitely picked up on what the person was doing and seemed to match that. Yeah. So you have this 10th anniversary, 10 years, <laughs> not one, not two, 10 years. That's a major accomplishment <laughs> for any nonprofit. Um, how do people um, find out about the event and where can they go? So the event is on our website. Um, it's also on our Facebook page. So if you go to Facebook and you go to Wild Hearts Therapeutic Equestrian Program or Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes, we have two Facebook pages, you can get to the event and all of the information is up there. Or you can go to our website, which is wildheartstherapeutic.org. And there is um, a whole section all about the event, where it takes place, the time, how to purchase tickets. And we have one thing that's really important to note. We have a lot of tickets that are donated to the dinner um, from people who either can't make it or um, organizations that do sponsorships and they receive tickets and, and no one can attend. So they'll donate them back to the program. So if a veteran is interested in attending, Um, just give us a call or send us an email and we'll send you a ticket free of charge. Thank you so much. I am looking forward to attending. It's, it's, I've I've tried past years and and it just never worked out, but I, I I made it a point to come this year and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the miniatures there. I'm looking forward to some good food and it's shaping to be a very, very different kind of event as we celebrate your 10 years together. And, just knowing the scope of veterans' mental health issues and how important that is, I think anybody that is providing the kind of services you do is, is a warrior in my book. And, and so as you go into this year, into the next 10 years, are you starting to see the fruits of your labor 
come back to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the biggest ways we see it are the veterans who return to our program year after year because they enjoy it so much. It makes them feel so good. Um, They spread the word to other veterans and it just sort of snowballs from there. So that has been amazing to see. So if a veteran wants to come back, you allow them to come back? Absolutely. Yeah. They come back and um, what we do is we will bring in, we'll allow new veterans to come in and then they'll have the opportunity to learn, you know, and, and do the activities first. And then the people who return, depending on how many others we have in the program, can also work with the horses where they can help the um, new participants. Um, they can volunteer. They can just be here just because they enjoy being here at the farm. So there's so many different ways to just come and, and still experience um, the horses and the time at the farm over okay. and over. Awesome, awesome. So Oscar Mike Radio is about people who are on the move, literally, for veterans and supporting military. And Julie Lovely is one of those who's been on the move for a very long time. Uh, Julie, I just want to say congratulations on 10 years of of service. I I know the next 10 years are going to be great as you uh, grow and and more people partake of your services. It's just been really great talking to you as always. I'm looking forward to the to the uh, gala event. Thank you so much. So as we wind down, folks, you can go to Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes on Facebook, like she said. Her website will have all that in the blog post. Make sure that you are there on June what June eighth? June eighth. Yes. June eighth. Yes, I have it in my outlook. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to be there, and I, I'm just excited, kind of unplug for a little while and watch this all take place and julie this is again folks we're sitting in a barn and, and for most podcasters julie they wouldn't do this they, they <laughs> want you to come into their studio and i i love coming out here and setting up and just talking like we're just two people after a day's work you've got a lot more work ahead of you <laughs> this has just been great i just want to say thanks for allowing me to have this time with you oh thank you i love having you come So, folks, that is it. This is uh, Oscar Mike Radio. We're on the move. See you June 8th. Julie, thank you again. Thank you.